Hey, good evening. Uh, if everybody could grab a little food, come sit down. We'll start in just a few moments. Time for a drink. Okay. All right. So we'll, uh, we've got a bunch of people who want to set up. So I'll open. I'll open. We've got the mayor. We've got Advanced CT, Susan from CTIFS. Then we have um, a person from the UK consulate who came all the way from Boston to see you. From the UK? Yeah, UK consulate out of Boston. UK? What's the connection with the UK? They have a trade mission. I believe that's I a trade mission. I think it's not the UK, it's the Israel. Oh, it is. It's the Israel trade Israel. mission. Okay. So what is his name? Daniel Argu Arguinoff. You, you give him the option to speak? Yes. Okay. I, I mean, okay, then Stacey and you. We've got a little bit of a quick... We've got, we've got a long string, then we'll throw you up. Stacey opens, introduces so you, kick in here. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay. All right, everybody, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for coming to our building tonight. All right, I, <laughs> I don't know. This is, people are having fun here. This is good. Jessica, that's all right, we'll get it here. All right, everybody, welcome. Welcome, come on in. We have some chairs, pull some chairs around, you know, feel, or get the window seats if you feel more comfortable. You, you can sit here. Please sit there. You're good. Okay. All right. Yes. Come on in. You can bring food. It's okay. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much for uh, for all coming. Uh, my name is Paul Tyler. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for NASA Financial Group and also uh, responsible for our NASA re-incubator that's now about two and a half years old. Uh, Laura Dinah Haber, Haber sends her regards. Uh, for those of you who know her, she is the proud mother of a baby girl as of uh, two, about two and a half weeks ago, I think. So, um, you know, if you haven't sent her notes, send her, send her notes. I wish you were here. Um, so we, we have a, a we have a really good group here, and uh, uh, I think it, it's it's wonderful. Everybody is here in person. Um, I, it feels I, I think the, uh, remember you know Doug Roth and I were talking about the last event we had here with a bunch of uh, you know venture capitalists. Uh, it feels like another world. Unfortunately, you know we actually had this nice space that opened about oh about a week later. And this is the first time we've actually really gotten to use it for something uh, around innovation here. So thank you for being our first, uh, our first warm audience. Uh, uh, we have some tremendous visitors coming from Israel. Uh, before we get there, I think Kobe, thank you very much for saving the best for last. Okay, Des Moines. Tell me if I'm New York to Des Moines to you know you. The, the diamond, <laughs> the diamond. So I don't know. I, our our analyst calculated you may have traveled close to 15,000 miles. I don't know if that's right to get here. So anyway, thank you very much. Um, and uh, so so I'll, I'll sort of let Kobe and Stacy and some others tell a story. Um, we have a great trip. I want or a great uh, lineup of speakers. Um, 
happy to have you here, happy to be in person. And uh, without uh, further ado, uh, Mayor Luke Bronin, uh, can you come up and uh, welcome the crowd? Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I want to say, I'm going to take this out if that's okay. Uh, I want to say uh, a welcome to all of our uh, guests and the companies visiting from Israel. We are thrilled that you're here. And I uh, hope you've had a great trip, but hope this is the best stop on your trip. And uh, you've got a great welcoming committee here. Uh, this city, as you know, has a tremendous history as a center of the insurance industry for many years. But there's been a, a deliberate, coordinated, strong effort uh, over the last five, six years to make sure that we are not just a city that was the insurance capital of the world, but that is the center of insure tech in the 21st century. And there are a lot of reasons why uh, we're strong believers in that. One, as you know, we've got some tremendous global companies that are located here and, uh, and are proud to call Hartford their home and are deeply invested in this work. But part two is they're specifically invested in the work of mentoring and partnering with insure tech companies, with young companies that they can innovate and grow with. For a long time, a lot of them were doing their innovation work in Silicon Valley uh, or in New York, and they made a very conscious decision a few years back that they wanted to cultivate those strategic partnerships here, and they wanted to grow alongside of new innovative startups here. And uh, there have been dozens of insure tech companies that have come, come in in just the last few years. We're uh, pre-pandemic getting a ton of momentum, and I think we're going to work quickly to, to, uh, to bring it back now that things are coming back. But you've got access to the decision makers and the strategists and the leaders at global insurance companies in the city of Hartford in a way that you just don't in bigger cities. And it's a game changer for smaller companies. Uh, you also have an ecosystem of supporters. You've got, I mean, in this room right now, you've got the regulators, you've got representatives from the state, you've got the mayor, you've got private sector partners, uh, big, medium, and small. You've got uh, individuals who have dedicated their, their lives to building this innovation ecosystem. Um, and, uh, and all of that together makes for a pretty powerful uh, team that is doing this work together. So if you haven't gotten enough of a taste of that here, I'm going to give you an invitation that I hope you really take seriously, which is uh, my, my phone's open anytime. My email's open anytime. I'll get on Zoom. I'll get on a call. We'll welcome you back in person. But if there's anything about Hartford that interests you, intrigues you, and say, you know, it really would be good to have a U.S. footprint, and we'd like to make Hartford that place, I'd love to talk with you about it. And we'll make sure that whoever needs to be in the room to make that a profitable uh, use of time for you, we will do that. Um, so that's part one. Um, part two is uh, this is a city that has a really strong relationship and a state that has a really strong relationship with Israel. We've got some tremendous strategic partnerships, some that are longstanding, some that are newer, tremendous partnership uh, in the digital health uh, arena and a partnership between uh, Hartford Healthcare uh, and uh, the Israeli innovation arm. There is a, uh, you know, our, our governor and our development team at the state has made clear that that relationship is a strategic priority for them. So I think you'll find that you've got a lot of uh, support and a lot of folks who are deeply committed to strengthening that relationship as well. Um, lastly, let me just say, you know, this is a, uh, a city that, uh, as you discovered, is about two hours from New York, two hours from Boston. Uh, as I said, you're in a city that uh, has got uh, some of the strength of those big cities, but with access uh, to decision makers you wouldn't have elsewhere. But if you need to be in all those other places, you can be there awfully quick. Uh, and that's a tremendous strength too. So it is a thrill to welcome you all. It's a thrill to be here in Nassau Respace. And uh, if you don't already know this, this is also uh, one of the nerve centers of the insure tech community here because Nassau Re launched the Nassau Reimagine initiative, which has provided space for a number of insure tech startups that are building that community right out of this building. Uh, but it's not a standalone thing. Just a couple, about a 
I don't know, half a block away from here, you have uh, Stanley Black & Decker's Manufactory 4.0, where they're reinventing manufacturing for the 21st century. Just another couple blocks beyond that, you've got uh, Upward Hartford, uh, which is the center of a lot of innovation work in the city. You've got uh, Launch Hartford, which is that umbrella organization in the city, helping to promote innovation. You've got Nassau Re, you've got InsureTech Hartford, and I know we're gonna hear from Stacy soon. You've got so many different pieces of this ecosystem. And uh, I think your visit's probably gonna be too short to discover it all. So it either has to just take my word for it or come back soon. Thanks everybody. Welcome to Hartford. God bless and good to be with you. Thank you, Mayor Bronin. Uh, next, I'd like to e introduce Peter Denius of the Advanced CT. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Peter Dinius. I'm the president and CEO of Advanced CT. It's a pleasure to see you all here today. Paul, thank you. Uh, Mayor, great to see you again, and thank you. And um, super exciting to uh, have um, so many of you here, all in the name of innovation. Uh, Advanced CT, just so you know, is a uh, private nonprofit that partners with really many stakeholders across the state to, as our name might suggest, advance our great uh, nutmeg state and help uh, both our ecosystems like this one that is very vibrant, um, uh, but really work across the state. And I will say that innovation is uh, really a clear point of emphasis for everything that's going on here in, in economic development. Uh, and that goes back to a vision that our governor laid out just a, 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 few, a few months ago, really, and has begun rolling out and implementing um, the mayor and many others in this room are involved in uh, what is known as the Innovation Corridor in Hartford and InsureTech are right at the center of that. So um, it's, it's great to be here. We're one of the welcoming committees, you, you might say. We're here to support. We're here to, um, to be a connector, a convener. Um, Israel is near and dear to my heart. I, uh, in my prior life, invested in venture capital funds. I was on the ground in Israel many, many times, uh, love it very much, and uh, it's great to see you all here, and I think we've got a, a fantastic uh, partnership opportunity to uh, um, you know, foster that innovation and support the growth of your great, uh, your great ideas and your great businesses. So with that, I'm gonna get out of the way and uh, allow the welcoming committee to continue. I think Susan is up next. Susan Winkler, our great partner at Metro Hartford Alliance and IFS. Thank you, Peter. My name is Susan Winkler. I'm executive director of the Connecticut IFS and vice president at Metro Hartford Alliance. And welcome to Hartford, the insurance capital of the world. I know you ventured to another state. Uh, they may claim that they have a high concentration of insurance employment. Um, and they could state that claim, but we have the data actually that supports it. <laughs> we are the insurance capital of the world. But in the US, we have the highest concentration of insurance employment right here. So a small state, but highest concentration. We also have the highest concentration of actuaries. And we write a ton of insurance premium. I can't, I'm gonna to try to remember the numbers, but um, $11 billion of health insurance premium is written right here. That's a lot. That's number one in the country. Um, Benoit, I'm gonna, these numbers are, I think it's four billion in life and nearly four in property and casualty. Also, those are ranked six in the country. So that means we're writing a lot of insurance, but there's a lot of people that do that. We're, we have a talent that is so rich here in Hartford, that skilled labor, those underwriters, the actuaries, the claimants, those risk managers are all here to help and support your business. My organization is built of property, casualty, life, and uh, health insurers. They're here with open arms to make sure we can support your companies in any way we can. Uh, Israel's a very special country to us and we wanna make sure that we support it in every way. So welcome to Hartford, welcome to the insurance capital. That's gonna be my goal tonight to make sure each one of you know that this is the insurance capital of the world and happy to support your business. Welcome to Hartford. <laughs> and I am going to introduce Daniel Argonov, if hopefully I pronounce that acting counsel general of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Israel. Daniel. Thank you, Susan. So I'm not the acting counsel general, I'm just a consul in Israeli consulate to New England. 
Uh, so, first of all, thank you very much uh, to all uh, for coming here. For me, it's, it's a wonderful uh, closure because I was here just before Corona, a year and a half ago in March, when we signed an agreement between uh, Hartford Healthcare and the Israeli Innovation Authority, as the mayor mentioned. It was a wonderful agreement, and I hope many more will come. Uh, Connecticut is one of the states that our consulate is covering. All, we have all the six states of New England. I think uh, the work that done in Connecticut is wonderful, and I hope many more Israeli companies will come here. And as Susan rightfully mentioned, this is the insurance capital of the world. As again, as a career diplomat, I, I will be very brief. I will speak like 30, 40 minutes, don't worry. <laughs> and I'm kidding, of course. Uh, but again, I just uh, want to thank you all. Thank you for our uh, convener. Thank you, Paul. Uh, it was just uh, nice to meet you in the restroom. Um, <laughs> uh, this is the best place to meet people, you know. There you can talk really, truly. Yes, so again, thank you very much for coming. I hope many more agreements between Connecticut and uh, Israel and an Israeli company will uh, follow. Uh, we know that uh, Governor Lamont is just, he planned his visit to Israel before Corona. Unfortunately, it uh, delayed because of the pandemic, as many other things. Uh, we don't want to do this uh, visit as a uh, you know, Zoom visit, so we are still waiting until all the restrictions will be lifted and the government and his team and maybe some of other local players will join him uh, to visit Israel. And I, I, it's very nice always to bring Israeli companies here. And thank you, Kobe, for doing it. But also, I think it's very nice for you guys to come uh, to visit us, to visit Israel. Uh, and uh, as Mayor rightfully mentioned, uh, you are very close to Boston. You are very close to New York. I just want to, to correct you. It's only an hour and a half drive to Boston. So it's much, much closer than New York. <laughs> I hope you will uh, go through through New York next uh, through Boston. Excuse me. Next time when you fly, we are uh, hoping there will be a new direct uh, line uh, of Delta from uh, Boston directly to Israel. So it will be just you know Israel, Boston, and then hour and a half to Connecticut. So I hope all of you from here will visit Israel, and I hope the Israeli company will come here again. Thank you very much. Thank you, and. Uh, who has packed an incredible amount of punch here in Hartford? But Stacy Brown, Stacy, come on up and uh, introduce our uh, our guests. Thank you, Paul. And if you ever want to get from uh, from Boston to Hartford in 75 minutes, just give me a call. <laughs> uh, I'm Stacy Brown. There were a couple of slides for uh, the InsureTech Hartford. I don't know if if uh, they're still available. Click oh, there's a clicker. Ah, oh, look at that. Here we go, just real quick. I, I think a lot of people know who InsureTech Hartford is, but basically we're a, a local grassroots organization, at least that's how it started, of insurance uh, executives and, and, uh, and, and professionals that just wanted to have a, a community and a, and a way to get together and collaborate and, and learn with what's going on in the industry, et cetera. So, um, you know, actually there's, there's some people up there we might recognize, right, Kobe? You see Guy up there? Yeah, Guy, where's Guy? Oh, there he is. Yeah, he, we, he he, uh, he he cleaned up really nicely at uh, at the pitch night event that we had a, a couple months ago. So, um, but yeah, we we've been trying to help startups get uh, get launched in the in the local community and also helping the local insurance professionals keep track and understand what's going on in the industry and how that that could impact them. So, uh, the way we do that is through events uh, much like this, um, and uh, we've been doing that for several years. And uh, speaking of events, so. Uh, there's a few things coming up uh, locally that people might have interest in. Uh, first is, uh, Susan, um, we have the, tomorrow I think you have an event, right? Um, it, that's, is that all virtual? It's all virtual, excellent. Um, and uh, as well as uh, the platform and ecosystems event that we'll have uh, in person on December 9th. And uh, in, the guys down in the street in New York are running their digital first uh, uh, spring conference in, in March. And we're ramping up for the InsureTech Hartford Symposium, uh, which is geared up to be a thousand person event right across the street in the Connecticut Convention Center. And hopefully we'll see you there. But enough from me. Um, I'm really excited to see these eight great startups, Kobe, that you brought with, uh, with you today. And without further ado, I, for those that don't already know him, I'd like to introduce Kobe Bendelot. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you, Stacy. He's the Ishutik celeb. <laughs> All over the world, really. Stacy, Stacy. Thank you, Mayor, that you arrived from our, our uh, event, and thank you, Council, too. <coughs> um, I will not take the time for, uh, from the startup, so I just will say just a few words. Thanks. I'm very happy to see that we have legs. <laughs> During the Zoom, we have just faces, faces, so face to face events. We have legs, yes? And not pyjama. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's very exciting to see people uh, gathering and speaking each other. Uh, we're really excited uh, to arrive to the Diamond on the Crown. We've been in, Di in uh, Des Moines, Stanford, Hartford, tomorrow, nine, tomorrow in New York. So we're really proud to be here and thank you for arriving. And thank you, Leland. You made a great job to arrange that. And uh, I think it's the time for the startup to speak. And we arrived to see them. So, uh, hi guys from behind. Ah, we have a we have a video about Israel. So, the the hunt them. I need to click. Where? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 No, ah, it's no. you. Mine. It's no. Uh, <laughs> he always doing that to me. He want other tries. Uh, yes, he always doing that. It's it's all right. It's all, it's working, Ashley. Ashley, no. No. Next. No, it's a very good video. <laughs> you must see see that. Yes, okay. really. It's the anthem of the. Oh, no. Again, covery. Why? What, how much you pay them <laughs> for that? Uh, I think it's in the it's in the other. Uh... No, no, it's not now. It's not that. Uh, you should take download. Yes. <laughs> You're laughing on me, ah? Huh? In the <laughs> startups, okay. Okay, maybe we will see that in the end if it's compl it's complicated. Okay. <laughs> yes, I, in it, here here's it. Here's it. No, 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 no. That this is P Cyber. This this one, this one, the last one. Startup Nation. Okay. Yeah. One sec. It's working. This is Israel. Oh, uh, forget what you read. Forget what you heard, come open-minded and listen to the word Cause we chillin' right here in the land of creation That's right, you just landed in the startup nation Some call it Israel, some call it milk and honey We pay with the shekel, that's some funny money Channeling the chutzpah, building something new Solving global problems, affecting me and you How to navigate? We brought you ways Electric cars? Maybe one of these days Coming in strong with the R&D from the place that invented the disc on key, the USB protecting trillions of USD. Checking each point with cyber security. It don't matter your issue nor industry. Y'all know we like creating new technology. Third only to Silicon Valley and NYC in attracting that BC for our P and GDP. To be real though, we're a small country. But that's what makes us so Israeli. So open up your mobile line, think outside the box. Connect your cyber arc to Ethernet with some Melanox. Move it like a JFrog and leave out all the drama. Use your common sauce and central studio data rama. Clean up your house, then take a few pics. Get a similar website and launch it via Wix. Walk me through a WeWork and drink some lemonade. Nail a couple fathers, next Monday you'll get paid. So take an app's flyer for soda stream over plastic. Use your out brain if your vibe is elastic. Take a magic leap of faith and playing an extra factions. Rack up the tabo. 
ruler and tracks all your reactions. Bring a compass or cam, take some risk of vibe. Pioneer with fun bucks and falafel on the side. No platinaries in the sky. It's provide, of course. Charge up with the store dot at the iron source. Forget what you heard. Forget what you read. Let me take you to a sea that's both living and dead. We got Tel Aviv, Beersheba, Jerusalem, to Rehovot, and Haifa. To name another few to understand the innovation, you must understand their mind. Get inside Israeli culture. Explore and you shall find we have this never-ending thirst to try, try, try. Always seem to ask the question, why, why, why? Failure is accepted. Risk is something to embrace. Necessity is the key to invention in this place. Lack the fresh water. Reinvented irrigation. Lack the fresh water. Improved desalination. Facing constant rockets produce the iron dome for millions of immigrants here's the only home so come and join this movement i'm handing you the key let's build a future where tech serves humanity a world with more freedom and equality use biotechnology to protect ecology even though we're eight million stuffed into new jersey diversity is what makes us israeli okay thank you just saying to the startup you have just two times to see that <laughs> more, okay? <laughs> they get tired from this uh, movie video. <laughs> uh, and uh, not, not a lot of people, maybe here a lot of people, but not a lot of people around the world know that Lemonade, Next Insurance, Hippo, Ernix are unicorns coming from Israel. So maybe now we will see, our, not maybe, I'm sure, that we are going to see the next one that's coming from Israel. So please, Kovary, please, Elad. So I had a guest appearance, uh, but uh, now the real thing. Uh, so hi, I'm Elad Bibi Aviv, co-founder and CEO at Covery. And uh, at Covery, we do a protect now, pay later, uh, P2P uh, platform for freelancers. Actually, there are 59 uh, million freelancers in the US that do not have the capability to take a day off and uh, to take a sick family leave or uh, uh, support, uh, let's say, uh, go on to a parental leave. And they are more than one third of your, your economy. And 73%, and I don't know if the, more, the, the mayor, if it is the same uh, situation in uh, Artford, but uh, a, a graduate students go as freelancers. And uh, once they are being required to take some days off, they cannot. And we made a survey of 5,000 participants uh, in New York, California, and Texas, and found out that almost 92% of them are uncovered against income loss, which is something, it's horrifying and is socially aspecty. And it's not that they don't think that it is important. 75% of them really appreciate it and think it's important uh, to be required. But when uh, they are offered uh, traditional insurance, they say immediately, nay, they don't want to be uh, involved in it. And why? Because they perceive it as costly, untrusted, confusing, and outdated. And uh, that's where we stepped in and uh, created Covery, which is an innovative uh, community sharing uh, P2P parametric income protection for freelancers. Uh, so Covery is based on three ingredients. Uh, one is AI technology that makes the risk assessment uh, approachable to uh, uh, freelancers. The second one is a novel business mo model in which uh, people are uh, uh, paying only when there is a payout. They are no, not paying premiums in advance. They pay the premiums afterwards, retrospectively. So only when there is a claim and a need, they pay the pro rata up to a maximum participation cap. Uh, what uh, removes a barrier of freelancers to enter into insurance, this is what we discovered. And the third one is we take normal disability and paid family leave covers and make it parametric. Uh, we are not checking against how much income you lost or, uh, or a, a for which term have you left your job. We you know in advance that if you are, are being uh, a, into a certain reason, you'll be paid 75% of your, of your income, of your de declared income. What makes it very simple to them to engage to. And, uh, so basically, the values that we give them is transparency. We are fully transparent. You know exactly what you are paying for, for which causes on each month. It's very simple. It's fully digital, five clicks, and you're in with a personalized uh, cover. And it saves up to 50% because you are paying retrospectively. 
uh, on a protect now pay later. Uh, we are working on a B2B B to B to C model on which we are taking commission on top of the payouts. And uh, from our first 1,400 members, we saw that this is around $49 a month. Uh, so you can multiply it by 60 million freelancers and you get your market. Uh, and uh, basically, this is how it works. I don't know. I can click on it. You may. So basically, we are integrating it. Uh, this is a life example of one of our partners. We are integrating it into their platforms. And uh, you may? Hmm? Never, mind. Never mind. We are integrating it into their platforms, and uh, they can uh, uh, use it. Our desired partners are mainly communities and unions. Uh, as I said, uh, we haven't filed it into Connecticut yet, but, uh, but in, in New York, California, and uh, Texas, with one million members, and our experiments show that we have a conversion rate of around 30%, which is quite impressive and surprising. Uh, our team com is composed by me. Uh, me. This is my first startup uh, after two successful startups, Archie Treat, our talented CTO. Uh, actuary was done by Ian Duncan and uh, Justin Orenburg, uh, which was a VP um, disability at MetLife, and Syria Orvitz who established the Freelancers Union and ran the Freelancers Insurance Company with $100 million revenue per year, uh, premiums per year. And uh, this is what we've actually achieved in the 10 months uh, on which we are uh, formed. From, uh, we have a working actuary model and algorithm regulation in Texas, New York, and California, working MVP, uh, major partnership, and uh, managed to find a go-to-market that saves us a lot of costs. Uh, we are in need for, first of all, capacity. Uh, we want to give more uh, security to our model and need a kind of a proportional capacity in order to secure it. Uh, we can manage without it. However, it is not wise. Uh, so this is the first thing that we are uh, afterwards. And afterwards, we'll uh, uh, make uh, our seed round in order to, uh, gain, uh, to go to a $2 million ARR. And that's us. Thank you for having us. <clears throat> Ilya, please. Yes. Ah, yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. The startups ask me all the time, why the people is not asking questions? And I realized that I didn't say that you can ask questions. <laughs> In the end, thanks God. Uh, so if there is any questions to Covery, if not, you can find... Uh, or I'll add uh, uh, later and speak with him. Uh, Ilya, please, just remind that you have five minutes, okay? Five minutes, if not. Hi. Uh, okay, my name is Ilya Shapira. I'm CEO and co-founder of Emotion. Emotion actually develops next generation climate model. Simple. Uh, but we actually focus on uh, the economic or climate impact on economics or bottom line of our clients, okay? Emotion is from emotional. We are very emotional guys. Uh, and we are very excited each time we actually forecast right. And because we are very good in what we do, it's kind of permanent state of mind in our team. Uh, my partner is more crazy than me. Okay, so what we do actually and what we do not do. We are not here. It's not interesting. Weather services global market is ridiculously small. 2.7 billion only. Why? We do not trust. We do not like to pay for weather forecasts. We do not believe in them. We cannot plan based on these forecasts. There are many reasons. Uh, accuracy is also beyond the five days, according to researchers, we have kind of 50-50 accuracy. Uh, and uh, as a curious, the mystic services market 
in US only is 2.2 billion. So if you would like to invest money, invest in mysterious uh, market, because you do not have actually any expenses there, and everything is a margin. So we are here. We supply unique and bankable forecasts. That means forecasts that do not update once they are released, no matter the range. They are very accurate. We are talking about above 90% accuracy. And you actually can plan based on it. Your risk management, commodity, stocks, energy consumption, many, many things. What is the market size? We don't know. It's kind of a blue ocean beyond the synoptic uh, services market. But actually, according to researchers, the market value of new and improved the climate model is something like $20 billion. Okay. So how we do it? We gather a lot of meteorological information globally. We analyze it. We clean it. How much? A week ago, IBM Weather, we also buy from them uh, the meteorological data, uh, actu actually say that we gather more information than Google and uh, Yahoo together. But the problem is, their problem is, is not actually how much we gather, but how we save it. So the trick is we do not. Okay. We mix it with our own GIS solutions. We actually map everything on the ground level that can influence microclimate conditions. We have our own solutions for NLP. Actually, we mined uh, the text meanings, uh, like researches and like uh, open source data. Why we do it? We actually search for unique impacts and any kind of information how specific climate conditions influenced something, somewhere, or someone. Okay, we learn it. So next time we detect this, uh, the similar conditions, we actually know where it will lead from the point of view of influence of bottom line of our clients. So first of all, it's quality of data. It's quite very, very bad. It's one of the reasons why thermodynamic uh, uh, climate models do not provide what they should to provide. It's an offset. If we measure the gridded data with the physical meteorological data, we have a lot of mistakes. So we actually learned to clean it. And today we say this data is the best that you can get on the market. This quality of data we can push into our climate models. So what we do with this data? We actually map it, and we build huge neural network of virtual weather stations around the world. Thousands of, hundreds of thousands of virtual stations that do not actually exist, they are calculated. And all the neural network helps us to detect the butterfly effect, how the menoric changes in one of the points here actually leads to other changes in, in other points. Once the, once the change is causation relationship and not correlation, it will use us in the future for forecast. Another thing we do it, we actually reverse engineer climate conditions. For example, you had an event here like a hail or flood. We go backward and learn what actually were the triggers for this specific event. We do not calculate thermodynamics. All is data science. Once we know it, next time we will forecast it. This is, in general, our uh, climate model. Look at here. Urikan Ida, Urikan Laura been forecasted two months ahead in the resolution of specific date, location, and power, two months ahead. So as a trial, we have the next one, no name, still, beginning of September. 
It will be really exciting to see it. I cannot say I hope it will happen, but it will be interesting. What is the major power of our approach? We do not need supercomputers. It's very, very easy from the computer power to maintain it. So the global system, like this on the left side, it's only three servers, basic three servers from IBM. But once we need to focus and to increase the uh, to increase the geographic resolution, so if here we are talking about kilometer on kilometer, in this case we are talking about 10 meters on 10 meters. We can do everything once we focus on it. What we can do with this kind of forecast and this kind of capabilities, we can calculate and forecast winds for specific streets, specific blocks, energy balance, anything that can actually interrupt your business activity in the urban area. Long range uh, uh, regional forecasts, it's a heat waves. This work has been prepared on May 21 till the end of the year. Never change from that. Each red dot point is 35 Celsius and above and 40% humidity. What we can learn from it? What the influence of this forecast on your decisions like stocks, supply chain, tourism, energy consumption, Everything, agriculture, commodity, synchronized calendar with specific events. Our clients say us, what are the risks? What they afraid of? For example, above 50 km per hour wind is problematic for him. We push it into the system and it will alert him in advance. How we actually can use it when we mix it with health data, for example, this is the case of actually reverse engineering of microclimate conditions for stroke events in Israel. And what we actually found, in 70% of events, there is a specific behavior of microclimate conditions, like three, four days before, that come before the stroke event. Acclimatization, we call it. Okay, so you can actually forecast stroke event. Stock market, this one is based on actually understanding how the winter season in the United States will look like. So the, the machine, based on LAP, choose the specific companies that will be most influenced by climate conditions. After four months, as we had 50% annual return, absolutely pacific, uh, absolutely passive, no hedging, no options, nothing. Just the right choice upfront with the right forecast. That's it. Thank you very much. Hello, hello, yeah, yeah, five minutes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm Tushar Bole, I'm the VP Head of Global Sales for Five Sigma. I'm actually filling in for my CEO. Uh, would like to just give a context to why Five Sigma, why was it uh, founded? Started by a couple of uh, uh, geeks, uh, mathematical and AI experts uh, from the Israeli government. Uh, they teamed up with Odette Barak, uh, who's, uh, who's been with Goldman Sachs, and then we're looking at interesting problems to solve with the AI and the math knowledge that they have. And pretty quickly, they zeroed in on claims management. Uh, given that claims management, what we saw was that the needle had not moved in terms of claim leakage. The claim leakage continues to be like 10% uh, across the PNC industry. And then we also look at uh, the loss adjustment expenses, which were still at about 10 to 
So the hypothesis is that we can help uh, improve the productivity of the claim adjuster. And by capturing all the data within the claim platform, we can provide models to do automated adjudication, uh, ability to reduce the claim leakage, to make sure that reserves are uh, automated, and also self-evident transactions, which you capture through your, uh, you know, the adjuster going on the phone uh, and getting all the claim details or a text or a video or a photo, whatever is captured through other means are captured on the claim platform itself. So those were some of the hypotheses that we had. And uh, with that, with that mission that we had, we, we came up with a vision of muting the risk uh, with regards to, uh, um, you know, any, any kind of property and casualty policy uh, that the carrier writes by providing the data of, of, of a claim, as well as uh, look at better adjudication and better uh, effectiveness and efficiency of the claims operation. What we uh, basically uh, quickly observed, and this is again, this is not a pilot stage. We are already uh, done with Series A. Uh, we have got 14 clients. And um, with the initial set of clients, and our initial client is, uh, is Hippo, uh, where we are doing auto reserving for them. We are also uh, working with uh, uh, risk management groups like MGM. Uh, where we help uh, reduce the risk that is, uh, uh, you know, that that they take up as part of their property management. So basically, with providing a complete end-to-end -end claims platform, what we, and and this when I mean end-to-end, -end, we are talking about event coverage verification, liability determination, damage assessment, and then uh, disbursement. And post disbursement, the completed claim file is also uh, the QA on the completed claim file is also done on the platform itself. So you know how much coverage, what coverage, how much uh, someone has paid. So if it's a basement leakage, uh, you know, you had reserved $12,000, but it ended up, uh, you know, $20,000. So how, what were the chain of events that led to a higher uh, disbursement? And whether it would have been done better if you would have had a multiple uh, adjusting team kind of look at that particular claim? How do you reduce liability? Uh, how do you reduce litigation? So all of that uh, we are capturing in the platform itself. The, the data around it is captured in the platform itself. It is shared with the ecosystem. So we have uh, multiple integrations that we have done uh, uh, with, uh, with, with claims management, with, with our claims management, and uh, multiple data providers in the industry, we have also integrated with them. So for example, uh, we have integrated with Lob for doing all the mailings. We have integrated with uh, Oneing for payments and, and stuff like that. So what whatever is there normally, which is with the traditional insurers it takes, or traditional software providers, it takes millions and millions of dollars. We can do that far quickly because of the technology and because of the cloud native uh, platform that we offer. And it's all on Google Cloud and it's all, on scale, it's, it's all scalable. So basically that is that is the proposition. Uh, that we offer, all communications are captured within the claim platform itself. Um, and uh, yeah, this is this is where we are in terms of our journey. We have already gone live with uh, multiple LOVs. We have done home, auto, and right here in US. So we have uh, TSC, which is now part of Stillwater Group uh, for home and auto. We have got Insure, which is uh, Munich Re Digital Partners portfolio company. They are, they are doing ride share insurance. And uh, they have implemented claims here in US. They have rolled it out to UK. And uh, we have pet insurance with Boost. We, got, we went live within a week at, uh, at Boost for pet insurance. I mean, that is something which uh, no one in the industry has done uh, so far. So ability to go live quickly, ability to kind of reduce your uh, unallocated loss adjustment expense, move more expenses towards your allocated loss adjustment expense so that you can uh, resolve the claim better. I think that is possible with uh, Five Sigma. So that's about it. We've got uh, 14 clients and would love to uh, have, you know, any questions that you have, love to answer that. Thank you. This is how it works. Okay. 
Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Eliron. I'm a co-founder and CEO at Raven AI. And what we do is automating damage inspections on your cars. Uh, we are uh, now uh, post our Series A, so we've raised over $25 million. Um, we active at uh, four locations around the world. U.S. base is Austin, Texas, where cars are, they tend to be, and um, around Europe and Israel as well, where most of our R&D is based. And as you can see, our team is quite balanced across uh, business as well as technology, computer vision, and deep learning um, and auto um, across the world. We're also quite fortunate to have industry investors uh, such as Shell Ventures, uh, the Royal uh, Dutch Shell uh, Venture Capital Group, and uh, Car Global actually led our Series A round. Um, that was earlier this year. And we automate damage claims across um, auto, um, the auto industry. This includes car rental companies, of course, um, used car assessments, and I'm here at Hartford to talk about the wonderful topic of damage claims in insurance. And they're quite off, they're quite uh, regularly happening across the industry, and unfortunately, quite a costly um, incident uh, for all parties involved, and uh, does result in pretty poor customer experience. In fact, an Accenture survey done. Uh, recently found that if you are a customer that um, had an incident, you're twice as likely to leave your insurer within the next 12 months, and whether it's paid or not. And we believe it's closely related to the fact that most claims need to be uh, involving an inspection, a car inspection, and that needs to be done still uh, by humans, whether on the spot or remotely, people are involved. And wherever people are involved, you know, um, the topic gets uh, quite expensive. The adjusters don't work for free, so that's a cost. Uh, but also, they make some mistakes. There are supplements to the claim, sometimes even fraud, and ultimately delays in getting the car back on the road to the customer. And we ask ourselves, with most of the claims actually pretty well understood, most damages can be estimated, why can they not be fully automated? Of course, they can be. That's why I'm here. Uh, so we built a, a virtual cloud platform. They can take videos from your mobile phones and can turn them into estimates. And the platform consists of three components, and that's across the board, not just for insurance. It includes, firstly, video capture AI. We work both on CCTV kind of stationary cameras, cars just drive through, or through mobile experience, where you just walk around and take a video. We are the only solution that works with AI on the device to give you feedback in real time, whether or not you have internet. So you just know what you're capturing, and that makes it much more intuitive. Then it goes to our AI in the cloud that can analyze the vehicle and can see what damage is in there. And uniquely, we don't actually need to know which vehicle this is. We're VIN agnostic. And I'm going to talk about the technology in a bit and how we do that. Um, and finally, a last mile integrations. We know we're part of a workflow. There are claim estimatics platform. Um, there are claim handling, like our colleague here presented, claim handling platform that we plug into the process um, and make sure it's all working well. So in terms of the user uh, experience, you just basically activate the camera. It can be via the browser. You don't even need to install anything. And you can just walk around and you show the damaged area to the camera. Basically, a video experience. The AI detects where the damage is on the car. You can review it. And you can also look at a third party vehicle, typically it's another, another party uh, to the claim. We do both. Now, in the back end, we have a review tool because people do want to take a look at the car remotely. And you can see everything, and you can kind of make edits and review the damaged area. And finally, we produce an estimate. And the estimate includes, at a minimum, pictures, lots of pictures from the video, zoomed in, zoomed out, like an adjuster likes to make them. Um, and they're all taken by the AI and pre-cataloged into the estimate. We have a damage description with location, type, severity. Uh, you have the recommend report, uh, repair. And there's always, we try to give two options, the cheap one and the traditional one with all the original parts. And we use for the repair cost, Whichever price uh, estimate that you um, you prefer to use, uh, US customers tend to have a Mitchell or something else, and we could integrate those into the estimates. And then what finally happens is, 
if the claim is simple, it's a, it's a simple damage that can be estimated, we provide the estimate and you can go back to the customer and say, well, look, you can have $500 in cash and close the, uh, close the claim. If it's more complex than that, we simply export everything from here to the body shop so they can complete the estimate on whichever engine they're using, again, Mitchell, CCC, whatever, um, and they can do it from there. It's really important to be transparent on this case. We do not think AI can um, estimate fully everything, but we believe that a vast majority of the claims can be estimated completely, ma completely automatically without human touch. We've proven that in other industries. Um, we've shown that is working in the used car and fleet space, and we have started implementing this with a European carrier. We're bringing this now to the US. I can't finish the presentation without talking about competition because it's, it's out there. There is AI that's being used to try and automate damage claim, but we believe it's hitting a glass ceiling on precision. And in turn, it's enforcing pretty restrictive uh, user interface on people to take the right pictures. This tech has built quite differently in the sense that it did not come from insurance claim. It came from the fleet industry, from car rental. We've been looking at cars day in and day out for major car companies like Avis, uh, Toyota, Odessa Auctions. They're using the solution for used car assessments. And these cars have both smaller and larger damages. So we haven't really trained the AI based just on a bank of collision images. We've trained them on live cars moving day in and day out, in and out of locations. So we're, pride, we're quite precise. Um, secondly, the AI itself is using the image, the vehicle itself for reference. I'm happy to uh, talk about that. I can talk for hours about the, re the reference model. It's quite dynamic. And we use the AI on the device to, optimal, to create the optimal input of images. And what that means in practice is that you don't need to train person to take the right picture from the right angle. You just take a video and we pick uh, the images ourselves, quite more accessible to um, a novice user. Anyway, thank you very much. Kobe's like um, wanting me to finish. I'm happy to talk to anyone that's interested. And uh, we're starting to think about a round B, so also investors are welcome. Thank you. Questions? No integration? Five minutes. <laughs> integration, probably two days. Uh, getting to the right person to do the integration? Three months. Good evening, thank you for your hospitality. I am Avi Barto, I am Gamasec CEO and co-founder. First, you get now a presentation with a French accent. What Gamasec is doing, we are providing a turnkey cyber security solution to insurance carrier. Our insurance partner are integrating our cyber security added value solution into their cyber insurance policy for the SMB market in order to prevent the risk before it happened. The advantage of preventing risk before it happened provide the capacity to mitigate the SMB cyber exposure, to minimize the loss ratio for the insurance company, and to provide to the insurance carrier something with a lot of importance, intelligence data and risk score. The estimation today is that more than 80% of the cyber attack can be prevented before it happens. 80%. And that's exactly where we are coming. So let's go first with numbers. First, we see very clearly that the majority of the attack are coming against the SMB. More than 64% of all the cyber attack are against the SMB. And I will explain why. The third thing that's very important, we see the growth of the cyber insurance at the SMB market. 21% of growth per year for the next year. One of the largest growth in the insurance market. Now, why the SMB are a target? Lack of personnel, 
lack of skill, lack of budget. They cannot compete with the organization and the enterprise. Therefore, the hacker find them as the best target to attack them. The third thing that we can see is that the majority of all the cyber attacks are coming again from external sources, as 70% of all the attacks are coming from external sources, and 42% of them through the company website. Now, when we ask C-level, owner of SMB, what is the thing that you are more afraid of? What makes you not sleeping on the, in your night? They say that suffering for major data breach, 58%, that's the main concern. Now, cyber insurance, they have a few challenges. The first one, with cyber, they don't have enough data. They don't have those years and years of experience where they can collect the data. The second challenge is that cyber risk changes constantly. The cyber risk of yesterday is not the one of today. The one of today is not the one of tomorrow. Combine those two together, and you will see that it's very difficult for the insurance company to predict the risk. So if you cannot predict the risk, what you're supposed to do to prevent it? And that's exactly what Gamma Tech is doing. We are preventing cyber risk before it happens. We are providing to the customer report that show them what kind of risk they have, where the risks are located, what are the consequences if a hacker will take advantage of those risks, and more important, what are the remediation that need to be provided in order to close those risks. That's what Gamatech is providing. The second part that was very attractive to our insurance partner was the turnkey solution. Nothing to do, either for the insurance carrier or the policy holder. The customer purchase a cyber insurance and automatically is receiving our service on board without configuration, without downloading as a turnkey solution. The business model of GammaSec is to provide a service on board bundle with cyber insurance as to B to B to C. And when the customer is already on board, to provide them additional service in order to prevent and to increase the security solutions. Now, the loss ratio is not one of the most important things for our insurance partner. The insurance understood that insurance today is a commodity. And in order to create the differentiation, in order to bring customer to them, in order to keep the customer year after year at the same insurance carrier, they need to provide added value service. That's exactly what GammaSec is providing with an additional intelligent data and risk score on their own portfolio. So we already working with several insurance carrier and broker worldwide. And I will take two examples of our partner. One is CNARD in the UK, part of the Lloyd. This insurance company integrate the GammaTech solution into the cyber insurance policy. Every customer purchase a CNARD insurance policy, receive the GammaTech service. The second example is BFL, who is one of the biggest brokers in Canada, and Zurich Insurance. Here, Zurich went one step ahead, and they are providing a 10% discount on the cyber insurance premium because the GammaSec solution is integrated into the cyber insurance. We start our activity selling and partnering with insurance company in 2020. Today, we have three carriers that we are working with, with more than 400 customers. Nothing can be done without a team. I had the pleasure to work with Ziv and Leo, who are the technical guy behind the GammaTech technology. And because we understand the importance to understand insurance, we bring out to our board people from Israel and from the US that understand very well insurance and can adapt our solution to the insurance world. Thank you very much. Any question?
Hey everybody, I'm Guy Benjamin from uh, InsureRights. Uh, U.S. healthcare is simple, accessible, and easy to navigate. This is an exact quote. I'm sure you know who said it. No one, ever. <laughs> it's the exact opposite. It's a sea of confusion and a huge source of waste. U.S. healthcare accounts for 20% of GDP. That's twice than any other developed country. Employers spend $1.6 trillion on employees' health care. That's a whopping $10,000 per employee per year. But 70% of employees say they have no clue what they're covered for. Even myself, when I worked at McKinsey in New York, I had no idea what were my health benefits. My only options, either to call a call center in India or try to read a 650-page document that changes every year. This means that employers are losing billions of dollars on reduced satisfaction from employees, on lost productivity, and on higher health costs. In the US alone, $55 billion a year is lost due to late detection and the fact that employees are not taking their preventive care exams and are not as healthy as they can be. We have what it takes to win in this trillion dollar market and fix this. We have a very strong core team from different dimensions, including medical, insurance, behavioral economics, and uh, US market, and are backed by top tier investors, including Group 11, uh, Broker Tech Ventures, InsurTech Israel, Good Company, and Crescent. We also raised $22 million seed round just lately. Um, also led by Group 11, one of the top fintech VCs in the US. And we developed Zoe, the first ever virtual chief health officer. What Zoe does, she can take any health plan, the 650 page document, use AI, and analyze it to the T. Now, once she does that, she can help and she can provide personalized health recommendation to employees based on their specific needs and on this, based on their specific time proactively and reactively, meaning employees can go ask Zoe any questions they want about their healthcare, but Zoe also proactively reaches out to them to let them know about preventive care benefits. Let me show you how it works. In this example, an employee, instead of calling India, will reach out to Zoe and say, hey, I've been having back pains lately. What am I covered for? Zoe immediately goes to his plan in seconds and let him, lets him know the relevant benefits for back pains, telehealth, at-home care, orthopedics, chiropractor, or a massage. Once he picks one of them, in this case orthopedics, again, immediately Zoe gives him his coverage. In this case, 20% co-payment in network and no coverage out of network. But she doesn't stop there. She then takes the extra steps and show him the most relevant, nearest in-network providers, their location, his specific out-of-pocket, their review, and when they're available next. So you can see that in less than a minute, we got more information. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I drop the mic? I'll keep, I, I have a lot to say, so I can keep talking. Don't worry. Um, but you can see that in less than a minute, you got more information than you'll ever get in a call center. Zoe is 24-7. She doesn't take PTO. Um, and she makes the user a consumer. So think about all everything around consumerism in healthcare. That's exactly it. Because suddenly, now I know the cost, I know in-network, out-of-network, availability, and reviews in a matter of seconds. So I can really be a consumer. And lastly, she tells, me, she tells the user it's been a while since he's last seen did his yearly physical and asks if he wants to book, if, if he wants her to book him an appointment. So really being reactive and proactive. Now, why would employers pay for this? I think it's pretty obvious, but we increase employee satisfaction, reduce turnover, eliminate the need for call center during work hours, less downtimes, healthier employees, more preventive care, less loss and late detection. But lastly, you also learn about your employees. What do they care about? What benefits are matter for them? Think about as an employer when it's time to go pick your plan, and you kind of think, okay, which data do I have to pick the right plan? None. I don't really have any data. 
But with Zoe, you really have the data to know what, what employee care about, what are they covered for, what are their needs, right? Not just claims data. And all of this for $4 a month per employee. We're currently working with about 12 US companies, it's actually now 15, and it's honestly increasing almost every day. We're about to, we're planning on reaching 50 companies by end of next year. That will get us to about 5 million ARR. Just one last fact, there's 60% of Americans every year either avoid or delay treatment because they have no clue if they're covered for it. We're changing that, we're bringing simplicity and transparency to the world of employee health. Thank you very much. So she's, she, because of the, so we're seeing demand from, we're focusing on the US. We have demand from Brazil, from Israel, from Guatemala. We, pl we programmed her in a way that is fairly easy to switch languages. We already did it in one other language, which is Hebrew, uh, but currently she's English and Hebrew. So Zoe is agnostic to health plan. She doesn't matter if you're Cigna, Blue Cross Blue Shield, or Medicare, Medicaid, VA. Um, so yes, she's relevant not just to employees, but also to anybody who's non-commercial. Hmm? Yeah, exactly. If I have your plan, or if you're a doctor and you want to know if your patient is covered for an x-ray, then you can use this as well. No, currently we're only focusing, because there's so many use cases, and as a startup, you gotta be very focused. We're now focused on employers, but you're right, that is a use case. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Noam Zolberg. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Cyber. I'm here with my partners, Dr. Maria Blecher, and Peter Dolch. Um, who in this uh, crowd today uh, deals with the cyber insurance? Well, we are here to change the paradigm in, in cyber insurance and we'll show you how. Can you run it? The surge in cyber threats increased both the demand for cyber insurance and insurance claims. Most cyber insurance claims are the result of human insider risks. Yet the insider risk factor is still not taken into consideration in the underwriting process. That's why we've created Cyber, a people-centric insider risk assessment platform for cyber insurance. Our AI generates a single organizational insider risk score while protecting the privacy and anonymity of employees. Cyber SaaS subscription will be an integral part of the survey and annual assessment for cyber insurance underwriters, brokers, and insurers. Cyber will reduce the loss ratio on cyber insurance policies and boost profitability. Cyber, transforming cyber insurance insider risk rating. So in a nutshell, the single most important uh, insurance policy that any business needs nowadays is cyber risk insurance. There's no doubt about that. It's the youngest sector in insurance. It's the fastest growing in insurance, and it is acting crazy. On one hand, it grows, the demand grows, and the adoption grows by 25% every year, and is forecasted to continue to do so in the foreseeable future, something that the insurance has never seen before. At the same time, the rate of damages and claims is accelerating even faster. So what do we have? Loss ratios. Insurance do not like that situation. They lose their risk appetite. They increase the premiums. They lower the coverage. Something's got to change. If I'm going back to the fact that this is the single most important policy that any business needs nowadays. So why is that? Underwriting today cannot assess the single most important root cause for cyber claims, and that is us. Everyone in this room is the riskiest element in the cyber world. 
technological failures present somewhere under 20% of the causes for claims. The rest of it is human behavior, and we set out to change that. Our novel solution is an AI-based behavioral assessment tool that brings into account several parameters, aggregates that, and provides a completely anonymized, company-wide, unified risk score for the presence of risky elements in the company. The um, value that we bring is uh, on several different layers. For one thing, we provide insight, something that underwriters love and do not have today. They are completely blind to that risk element of the insider threat. On the second hand, we will provide competitive advantage to our partners, to our initial partners, when we launch the product and uh, allow them to have a better offering for their customers and, um, and compete better in the market. Third, we believe we can actually be an enabler by allowing a faster growth. The growth forecast today is based on today's lower risk appetite. If we are able to help better underwrite and better ensure the cyber risks, the market could very well grow a lot faster and a lot bigger. The SME that uh, my friend Avi mentioned is in fact the sector with the most problems. There are about 30 million customers that fall under that definition. They have the least capability to defend themselves and they need insurance more than anyone else. Currently, the majority of them is having a hard time getting insured. We can change that. So what do we do? We provide a SaaS, a security as a service, or a service-based solution. There is no integration whatsoever. It's a renewable subscription with a um, variant, variant um, um, subscription price according to the size of the package that is procured. And we actually address the entire insurance food chain, starting at the brokers that take care of the customer's direct problems, working our way up to the carriers, and we would also, of course, uh, help the insured take care or identify where is their vulnerability, not on a personal level, but as an organization, and our future product roadmap will bring remediation and uh, even uh, acting as an MGA. Very proud of my founding team, uh, veterans with decades of experience in each in his own domain. What we seek now is our seed um, fund, uh, funding round. We seek uh, to uh, have uh, two and a half million dollars in order to accelerate our product development, go beyond the minimum value, minimum viable product. We want to uh, promote and move forward quickly on our go-to market, especially with a fantastic uh, feedback that we received during this uh, roadshow today. Thank you very much. Questions? I want to say one more thing, that we believe that we are first in market, as far as we know, and far, as far as our insurance partners tell us, um, this problem is completely unaddressed today. Thank you, Noam. Just to say that after y Yuval is the last, but not least, <laughs> he, he always <laughs> say that. Yes, after that we can meet together here and speak each other and ask questions. We have enough time. Thank you. Thank you, Kobe, and thanks, everyone. So I'll try to keep it short and concise, and luckily I have a colorful presentation, so it might be even good on a visual perspective. So nice to meet you all. I'm Yuval, a co-founder and CEO at Urbanico. In a nutshell, Urbanico is building an urban intelligence platform providing carriers with hyper-localized urban data that adds contextual risk factors on top of the common rating schemas that are currently used by the industry. Now, though it might sound a little high-level-ish, the model is super straightforward, and the story goes as follows. So, the insurance industry has always maintained a value chain that significantly relied on data. Whether we're talking about homeowners product, 
auto insurance product or commercial insurance products, the ability to analyze data on large scale has, has always been, and actually now more than ever, the key for building successful insurance products. Now, the mega trend of urbanization in which our urban areas are growing is widely known to everyone, and actually even COVID hasn't stopped this trend. In the US, for example, over 80% of the population currently lives in an urban area. And given the fact that the urban area is a very dynamic creature, it is very difficult to understand and predict all the different occurrences that are happening throughout the city. So whether we're talking about a new construction site, a, I don't know what happened to the slide, but anyhow, a routine police stop or a crime incident, a municipal inspection, a fire incident, or even a car accident. The urban landscape poses countless different perils that translates directly into insurance claims. And fortunately, urban data have tons of different indicators for those specific type of perils. The problem is that it's not that easy to understand urban data. So while local governments have those vast databases that touches almost every aspect of living within our cities, they suffer from a big inherent problem. And this problem is that urban data is just one huge mess. So when I'm saying mess, I mean that every local government is essentially storing its data using completely different standards, starting from different terminology and taxonomy, different levels of granularity, all the way to different attributes that build completely different data schemas, even for objects that in real life are essentially identical. Therefore, most carriers use aggregated data that's essentially averaging out the risk across a wide geographical area. Right? For example, even the leading insurance carriers in the US, and I guess some of them are here in this room, are assessing crime-oriented risk on a zip code level. The problem is that zip code is a mostly static geographical segmentation that was set up in the 60s of the last century by USPS in order to optimize mail routing. And so the actual correlation between zip codes and true crime patterns or real crime patterns is at best coincidental. So essentially, while insurers describe the world like this, reality looks more or less like this. So that the risk that is associated with two identical businesses or two identical properties that are located within the exact same zip code is in most cases substantially different. And if this nice illustration doesn't really cut through, then this is what a real crime heat map from the city of Chicago looks like. And I guess that you can see that across every different zip code, you can find at least 10 different areas with completely different crime patterns within them. So to solve this problem and allow the insurance ecosystem to touch this underutilized asset called urban data, we've built Urbanico. Essentially what our platform is doing is analyzing the data, distilling, analyzing all the different data points, distilling their fundamental building blocks, and then modeling their intrinsic relationships. Based on these fundamental building blocks, we're building a coherent representation of the urban space that reveals its opportunities and risks in a whole new level of granularity. And now, I won't go too deep into the tech stack, but largely speaking, Urbanico is using the most advanced NLP algorithms just because of the fact that most of the data is textual. And after transmitting the text into the vectorial space, utilizing deep similarity, a deep a similarity learning neural network, that allows us to understand all those micro interactions between the different data points and all of their attributes. So that at the end of the road, at the end of the pipeline, this coherent representation is distilled into unified risk factors that are provided at the deepest level of granularity, right? Based on the crime example we've just seen, instead of averaging out the risk on a zip code level, Urbanico takes into account the crimes that are truly relevant for every specific business or for every specific property in your book based on its exact geographical location. And just to put kind of numbers into context here, going down with a level of granularity from the zip code into the location level provides over 150x improvement from a special standpoint, not to mention the fact that our data is being updated on a daily basis. The true power of our platform is actually coming from our ability, from our wide perspective over the urban landscape that allows us to understand all the interactions between the million different um, objects, moving target, that are building this dynamic system we're calling a city, right? So for example, we managed to understand and quantify 
the significance of the existence of the fact that a specific street has 24-7 lights in it on the probability for a crime in this given street, along many other factors that are highly relevant for the prediction of crime in that use case. I guess that, as you can probably imagine, urban data is highly relevant for multiple different perils other than crime. So not a, putting crime aside for a second, Rubanico's data can help in the prediction of fire incidents, car accidents, uh, water leakages, and even infrastructural events like the condo that recently collapsed in uh, Surfside, Miami. From the get-go, it was very much important for us to make sure that our platform is seamlessly integrated into the standard procedures of work of the insurance industry, right? So uh, in addition to the underwriting insights that we're providing to carriers, we're also supplying bulk historical data that allows a actuarial department to improve and uplift the pricing models themselves. We're backed by some of the largest and most important VCs, uh, both in Israel and the US, uh, raised $1.6 million up to date and are currently starting a few POCs with some of the largest carriers in the US. Now, the last thing um, that I want to mention to kind of summarize uh, what we're doing in Urbanico is the fact that Urbanico's data is allowing carriers to predict their losses in a more accurate way, in a way that translates directly into improvement in the loss ratio. But even more so, going down with a, with a level of granularity, going deeper with a level of granularity and personalizing your uh, risk processes actually allows carriers to understand and find hidden risk that fits their appetite in areas that are completely underserved today thus not only growing your gross region premiums or your book, largely speaking, but actually doing it sustainably. And last but not least, our platform actually allows, with this uh, personalized prediction, allows carriers to focus on prevention and improving their interaction with their customers on a daily basis. This was us. I would love to take any question. Any questions? And thank you so much. Thank you, our list, last list. Uh, <laughs> okay, just uh, to summarize and say some words, I want to invite Roni Lichtenstein Shani, Deputy CEO of, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Kavi. Hello, everybody. So excited to be here. Um, I want to say some short closing words. And uh, first, I want to say thank you to Stacy and Paul for arranging this. It's so exciting to see that there's so much interest in the Israeli insurtech uh, delegation and uh, Israeli insurtech field. And I want to promise you, Susan, that all 13 representative of us, we're going to come back to Israel this weekend. And we're going to make sure that everybody in Israel knows that Hartford is the center of the insurance industry. So <laughs> you can count it on me. Um, as I said, my name is Roni Lichtenstein Shani. I'm a deputy CEO and head of uh, Ayalon Insurance headquarter. Ayalon Insurance is actually the sixth largest insurance company in Israel. We deal uh, both with the PNC insurance, health, and uh, life insurance. We manage a premium of about $1 billion. Um, it's not so much after hearing uh, Susan numbers, but once again, it's Israel. It's a small industry, and all the companies are domestic. We're not global, so... For us, it's a big amount. Um, I can tell you that Dialon was established um, like 45 years ago, and it's quite a traditional company. This is why we decided a few years ago that we want to go out to the ecosystem and uh, learn from startups and uh, learn from their ideas, their technologies, and bring innovation and um, digital transformation into Dialon. This was when we met Kobe, and together we decided to establish the first accelerator in Israel that deals with InsurTech. There are many accelerators in Israel. They deal either with FinTech or HealthTech or all kinds of uh, tech, but uh, in the insurance field, we are the only one. We have a few um, partners like um, Deloitte, Milman, Sompo Insurance Company, and if any one of you would like to partner with us, it would be great. And I will finish with one phrase I guess uh, some of you are familiar with. The phrase is saying, um, if you want to go far, I'm sorry, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, let's go together. I can promise you that 
if any one of you would like um, to invest in our startups, he can go both fast and far. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks so much, Kobe. Every uh, wow, that's all I can say. Thank you so much. You know, for all of you who came out here tonight, thanks for spending time investing it, uh, investing uh, the uh, time to meet and greet and listen to these wonderful startups uh, and more than startups. Um, Kobe, how much time do you have before you ha all have to leave? Four hours. Four hours. <laughs> oh, plenty of time. We have drinks. We have food. You know, please. Yeah, so please, you know, enjoy yourselves. Network. Uh, it's great to re and reconnect, and and uh, let's uh, get the get the fires going here again. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm curious. Do you know if you still have the numbers about Hartford? I think the Hartford case is a Germany was a big corporation down here. I think it's. Yeah. Yeah. So. A lot, a lot. <laughs> uh, all right, listen, thanks so much. Enjoy the evening.